The title of this presentation is Overview of Some Methods for Two- and Three-Dimensional Vertex Models, Challenges, and Prospects. So this presentation is meant to be more of an overview of everything else that came previously in the series, um, in which I'll draw some attention to just some characteristics and some of the major themes and aspects which came up in several of the different talks and videos to reiterate how this can help us look to maybe these models in two or three dimensions for some new open characteristics of these models or problems of interest. So it's to say that from the final presentation in the series, we're going to emphasize broader themes from the previous ones, which have connections with Bruce Seymour Welsh crossing probabilities, phase transitions, examples of a quadricotium of possible behaviors, as well as conditions regard for integrability type arguments, which ultimately uh, revolve around computations with the Poisson bracket. And then we will then describe some possible directions of interest relating to other models and statistical mechanics. So um, I reproduced one of the summary slides I had from a previous presentation because it really helps bring into everything in mind about how certain requirements for a quantum inverse scattering type argument and other types of properties relating to integrability of a Hamiltonian flow for the inhomogeneous six vertex model can be formulated in two dimensions and how obviously when we go up to three dimensions, there's a lot more content and structure in terms of the algebraic structure, the combinatorial structure, and the geometric structure. But the thing is that still having the two-dimensional case in mind, it has some more connections with um, just some way to express the L operator in terms of entries from the poly bases in comparison to the higher dimensional L operator, which we get a handle on, which holds um, which in fact gives a family of L operators up to Dinka automorphism, which we had also described across a couple of different presentations earlier in the series. So this is to say that we introduced the six vertex model in the R matrix and the Hamiltonian flow can, can, uh, corresponding to the six vertex model. And to talk about the quantum inverse scattering type approaches, we drew upon similarities of uh, computing the action angle variables for the nonlinear Schrodinger's and the Kamasa home PDs. So the Kamasa home PD can be related to some of the types of techniques for the Hamiltonian method, which is used for the nonlinear Schrodinger's equation because we perform some, the authors in their seminal work due to Adiv and Takatan, they, they uh, perform computations with the Poisson bracket for the entries of transfer matrices, which can be kind of looked at and viewed in some type of analog for the inhomogeneous six vertex model, but also for the Kamasa home PD, it has its own type of Poisson structure and, own type, and its own type of intrinsic notions of Poisson structure because you're using the Poisson, the Poisson uh, bracket uh, for different types of action angle variables, which satisfy very specific properties depending upon the Hamiltonian formulation of the Kamasa home PD and the fact that this Hamiltonian formulation is dependent upon two Hamiltonians, as well as like we had talked about a mass term, which is given by the solution of the Kamasa home PD minus the second derivative of the solution. And so across these presentations, we built upon several types of characteristics of discussing aspects of a conjecture for integrability of the Hamiltonian flow for the six vertex model in the presence of inhomogeneities that was officially, that was originally raised by Keating, Reshetik, and Srihar from their characterization of the limit shape of the six vertex model from uh, solutions to the Euler-Lagrange equations. And so this helped this helped us provide an overview of computations of the action angle variables in the Poisson bracket. And overall, altogether, this helped demonstrate to us how notions of quantum inverse scattering approach change with additional assumptions on the R matrix and the L operators. So like we had been mentioning and emphasizing a presentation or two ago, the fact that the L operator has a very specific structure and that this family of L operators actually exists up to Dink and automorphism, it's very important for being able to talk about different characteristics of the quantum inverse scattering type argument for the 20 vertex or the three-dimensional six vertex model on the triangular lattice and ultimately how this relates to the construction and the factorization of the universal R matrix into four terms, the last term for the K matrix being an exponential of a tensor product, as well as three preceding exponential terms, Q exponential terms, uh, preceding the K matrix in the factorization identity from the reference on uh, exercises with the universal R matrix that we had provided. So similar methods by which one can introduce notions of solvability and action angle variables for the Kamasa home PD relate to computations with the Poisson bracket for the homogeneous six vertex model. 
in which, like we said, this PD from this uh, seminal reference in the work uh, due to these authors, it demonstrates to us how there are different types of action angle variables which correspond to the Camasa home PD or even to the inhomogeneous six vertex model with some a priori information on the integrability of the limit shape and how this relates to the statement of the PD itself and in which you can induce some introduce some uh, transformation of variables to obtain a desirable two-dimensional Hamiltonian system, uh, depending upon different terms which appear in the PD, which ultimately helps us characterize some notion of the Poisson structure with computations with the Poisson bracket. And so the QISN type approaches relate to the six vertex model under the presence of homogeneities. So here's our two-dimensional six vertex model and how we had also discussed in a previous presentation in the series, how the two-dimensional six vertex model differs from the three-dimensional six vertex model on the triangular lattice. But the difference is that from that reference that we prov provided and drew, drew the attention of the viewer to from Di Francesco, he provides different types of formulations for the weights depending upon a grouping of, um, of uh, pairs of configurations of the three-dimensional six vertex model into groups of two. So it's just demonstrating how there are some aspects of the two-dimensional six vertex model and the three-dimensional six vertex model, which can at least be related to the same type of weights, which are introduced in the original isotropic parameter trace for the two-dimensional six vertex model. And like we have been saying, explicitly um, for the two-dimensional case, we were computing several Poisson brackets from which terms and other Poisson brackets can be approximated by permuting arguments, i.e. permuting entries of the transfer matrix in the Poisson bracket. And this was to say that there were several different types of characteristics of these Poisson brackets, namely the fact that, you know, we have some terms which appear which are products of alternating terms of uh, poly bases, which come into interpret which come from interpretations of quantum mechanics, as well as the fact that we have other terms which are a product of sine terms, as well as given by the fact that the sine function that we're using is dependent upon one spatial position U prime, as well as a spectral parameter and plus or minus eta times some constant times another poly Z operator. So it's another poly basis, which comes into the construction of the L operator. And this is to say that even though initially this type of system of relations may appear, you know, very large and very computationally intensive, which undoubtedly it is, it's leading us to the notions of uh, the Poisson structure and uh, how we can perform these computations with the Poisson bracket from the entries of the transfer matrix and how in the case for the three-dimensional L operator, we have been, it had led us to several different types of algebraic characteristics, combinatorial characteristics, and geometric characteristics, and how these relate to allowing us to broaden our interpretations of connections, such as like how we'll reiterate and discuss how we can see how um, there's a connection between the color partition function of the six vertex model with a double growth and deep polynomial, and how we had discussed in earlier presentations, uh, you know, a few presentations ago in this series, how we can make use of and further develop upon this connection between the distribution of the partition function and some special polynomial that's a double growth and DF polynomial. And so from the L operators to the set of 16 relations, we can see in the two dimensional case that we had described about how this was a simpler instance in a degeneration of the total number of relations that we'll get for the three-dimensional L operator. So this is to say that, you know, obviously when we scale up, we're going to have additional terms that come into um, play when we're talking about the interactions for the three, three-dimensional six vertex model for the triangular lattice. But still having at least for these aspects of the argument in this aspect of performing computations with the Poisson bracket and uh, characterizing uh, aspects of the Poisson structure of the three-dimensional six vertex model from the two-dimensional case, this is very helpful because it has it helps us uh, be able to apply the same type of reasoning and the same type of strategy for being able to, to permute uh, different entries of the transfer matrix when we're performing our computations of the Poisson bracket for getting some type of asymptotic approximation of the entries of the quantum monodromy matrix. And from the expressions for the terms appearing in the several Poisson brackets, an approach with the characteristics of the algebraic um, L operators is possible. So this is to say that if we have in, in mind this lower dimensional L operator, which is undoubtedly a simpler type of case in instance, rather than the higher dimensional three-dimensional L operator, 
that has entries which have different types of algebraic interpretations, then from the algebraic interpretations, we can still be able to make process or progress uh, with if, you know, and proceed to look at different types of characteristics of special polynomials or, de or determine other types of connections of interest with colored R matrices or colored or universal R matrices, which have some assumptions from representation theory that are introduced into these models or into these objects. And uh, integrability and related properties in statistical mechanics come into play in several areas. So first of all, this is referring to several types of works that, that we have provided at the very beginning of the presentation in the series. And in the first presentation of the series, we were interested in drawing upon general notions of integrable probability and the fact that, you know, integrable probability, it's looking at an extension or some, maybe some broader characteristics of just some, a few areas of discrete probability itself, because it's looking at connections between representation theory, combinatorics, and potentially algebraic geometry or other types of geometric interpretations. And uh, from these set of interpretations, it very much can relate and lend itself to a crosstalk and a feedback between areas from discrete probability because we can look at how different types of ideas, such as like how we have on this paper on the left most hand side, renormalization across improbabilities in the dilute POTS model, how in my first preprint, I was able to think about just introducing some modifications to some arguments from Dumino Copan and how if you look at other types of characteristics of the models for modeling interactions on the lattice or inhomogeneities of materials, which maybe physicists or experimentalists are interested in, we can think about different ways to make connections and further build upon this crosstalk between say one model of interest and also transfer it to several other model of interest. Like how we had demonstrated in the logarithmic delocalization paper at the six vertex height function under slope boundary conditions, we were able to look at ways to weaken the crossing probability estimates from weaker assumptions on FKG, SNP and CBC for the Ash Teller generalized random cluster in a Q sigma Q tau um, spin models. So it's demonstrating how even though these two papers, they're dealing with completely different types of models, there exists some commonality or representation for studying the connectivity events and connectivity properties of these models and how one can think about whether a model can also be able to satisfy some integrability conditions from a more dynamical systems perspective and framework in which you make use of the Poisson bracket. And then this is to say that even a couple other of the preprints that I have so far they, that are on the side, they demonstrate different types of characteristics in which one can make use of the beta ansatz and the algebraic beta ansatz approach for determining eigenvalues, you know, or eigenfunctions, eigenvectors, or even the, the density of roots uh, for the beta equations. And so the sample space of the D22 spin chain, which is one of the lower rank spin chains that we had talked about, it's helpful because um, it's demonstrating to us how we can also look at further uh, relaxations or degenerations of certain aspects, which are introduced in the definition of the six vertex model and how in this case, looking at a degeneration of the ice rule, it's related to our analysis of the root density approach for this uh, this uh, lower rank spin chain and also the higher rank spin chain because we can be able to apply a beta ansatz type of type approach and with this algebraic beta ansatz we're able to characterize solutions of the beta equations and how even though the higher dimensional universal R matrix with with the assumptions introduced from representation theory um, how this uh, universal R matrix itself doesn't satisfy the the Young-Baxter equation, it satisfies some other type of relation. So it's demonstrating one point of the argument in the higher dimensional, three-dimensional case for these families of L operators that hold up to isomorphism, how we have to consider how different types of information that we have either from spin chains, either in the lower rank spin chain or the higher rank spin chain can influence the sample space, as well as what type of integrability properties we would still hope to be able to conclude and describe. And so the lower rank spin, the lower rank spin chain, as well as the higher rank spin chain, satisfy transfer matrix with open boundary conditions that are encoded through these K matrices. And like we have mentioned, that to define the transfer matrix, we take the trace of some product of R operators, R R matrices, as well as the fact that um, we have two K matrices for enforcing, excuse me, for encoding the boundary conditions at each side of the chain. 
So, but to further study models with an integrable probability at the interface of representation theory, algebraic geometry, and combinatorics, we discussed the colorings of vertex models. And like we had done in previous presentations in the series, we reintroduced objects relating to analysis of the beta equations, which were discussed in the first part. And this is just, um, you know, a couple of videos ago in the series on the six vertex model near more the beginning of the series. And this helped us contemplate how notions of integrability for an uncolored vertex model could be used to study notions of integrability for colored vertex models. And in particular, like how we had mentioned that the colored vertex model has a combinatorial geometric interpretation that uh, we weren't necessarily able to find on and further capitalize and describe in further study um, in a previous paper for the Poisson structure and the integrability of the Hamiltonian flow for the inhomogeneous six vertex model in two dimensions. And altogether, all of these, having all these ideas and concepts in mind from the previous three bullet points helped us determine whether any notions of universality can be um, recovered from classes of vertex models, i.e. how many possible configurations are allowed in each sample space, as well as imposing conditions of stochasticity and coloring on the vertex models. So this is very much helping us uh, look at further connections and demonstrate how really the six vertex model it's a very important and seminal well, you know, and significant model of mathematical physics and statistical physics, because depending upon different types of assumptions that you put on basic objects of the model that you use to define the probability measure, you can form several different types of interpretations between coloring, stochasticity, and different types of polynomials and functions of interest. And this can relate to essentially formulas and uh, types of objects which are introduced in a geometric, more geometric, uh, more geometric areas of math and more geometric interpretations and more algebraic interpretations than just only discrete probability that we begin with and that we started with. But besides the integrability of properties, like we have been alluding, it's also good to close to as part of uh, the last presentation in the series to reiterate some general types of characteristics from the reference that we gave on double growth and deep polynomials and color lattice models, in which it provides um, more of an algebraic centered connection between the six vertex model and special polynomials, i.e. double growth and deep polynomials. And like we had said in that part of the presentation of the series, broadly speaking, this paper is occupied with examining connections between double growth and deep polynomials and the partition function of the colored six vertex model. And this allowed us to analyze colored R matrices, much like the uncolored R matrices, which are introduced in previous works uh, from my preprints, which established integrability conditions of the Hamiltonian flow. And we also talked about how this has consequences for the Young-Baxter equation, as well as being able to look at combinatorics of semi-standard Young tableau, and also combinatorics of a set-valued flag uh, Young tableau, and how we can define uh, double factorial flagged growth and deep polynomials just on top of the double growth and deep polynomial. And this was just reproducing the figure, the figure from eight from uh, the reference that was given in the previous slide, in which we talked about various type of macroscopic uh, qualities of uh, connected components of different colors in the color vertex model, and how these types of characteristics of the color vertex model uh, in this case, for n is equal to four colors, they can be related very much to the odd color types of configurations of the six vertex model that we were looking for as an extension of the results from Dumina, Copan, Carilla, Manulescu, and Olamara for the six vertex model um, in the strip environment, in strips of the square lattice in that first environment, as well as in the environments of the torus and the cylinder when we were looking at russo simo wash results for slope boundary conditions. And then uh, the color Boltzmann weights occur in which we also had described how we can arrange and interpolate between different colors in the color six vertex model for each one of the weights. Either we can have it as we can see in the B1 weight, a green and a white, or even a red and a blue, or no colors at all, or just a half green and a half white. So there are more complicated ways of defining the sample space for the models, as well as defining how the coloring gradient that we impose on the model impacts the types of uh, environment and probabilistic measure and probabilistic objects that we're going to construct and measure the probability of obtaining. 
And we had also mentioned how the extended lasso are in correspondence with the double growth and deep polynomials in which the partition function of the color growth and deep polynomial for some words W naught and then W belonging to the symmetric group can be expressed in terms of some weight per factor as well as a product of I over lambda and the fact that we have a direct sum of X sub I and Y raised to the lambda of I, it characterizes these polynomials as double growth and deep polynomials from the fact that we have a direct sum of two variables x and y appearing under this product term in the expression for the partition function of the color vertex model. And the Young-Baxter equation is also satisfied in which, like we said, from arguments which appear in all those type, all, many types of papers throughout the field of integral probability in higher energy physics and related areas, there can be a way to make use of a quantum zipper argument to push through this x sub i and x sub i plus one intersection that's given in the leftmost side of the configuration all the way to the right-hand side of the configuration while preserving the coloring of red and blue respectively of the di and di plus one terms. In this and as they say in the proposition in their paper from Buchimash and Shrimshaw, the fact that um, the Young-Baxter equation holds uh, implies that the partition function of the two models is um, is equal for boundary conditions which hold within the range of the range of colors which were introduced originally in the color gradient for the model. And so, from such algebraic and combinatorial objects, connections between probability and other errors can be developed from tableau combinatorics. So it's like we're saying in that we can define an extension of the set value or the integer value tableau from the semi-standard Young tableau and combinatorics and look at a set value tableau with a shape lambda, as well as the fact that we can have still this direct sum of the two terms, which is involved in the expression for the growth and deep polynomial, where lambda is some integer that, that, that we're looking to take the partition of. And then the fact is that we have also, again, as in the other expressions for the extended lasso and the growth and deep polynomials that we have been dis discussing about in reviewing in this presentation and earlier presentations in this series, how we have some beta term, which is raised, and we're raising this beta term to the power of a set value tableau of shape lambda. The, the task of interest now that we're returning more to the quantum inverse scattering approach side for the high dimensional L operator are characterized from the fact that we have mentioned this L operator across a couple of different presentations in this series and drawn several connections between the two dimensional case and the three dimensional case, as well as the fact that we can look at different connections from the automorphism, from the Dink and automorphism action on this L operator to obtain a family of L operators. And the fact is that we have a, with the characteristics and qualities that we have up here is that we have a tensor product of differential operators, which is motivated from the construction of a tensor product of two spaces. And then the she term is a complex value function, a complex value mapping. That's a mapping into unital associative algebra. But from the higher dimensional L operator, the universal R matrix with the factorization that we described into those four components, across several presentations possesses more algebraic and combinatorial aspects than the standard R matrix below. So this is just really demonstrating how, because this is an overview presentation in the last presentation of this series, how we can still look to either differences in the dimensions of models of the same model against each other, as well as connections and mappings between two or three dimensional models between each other or other types of models from classes of two dimensional models or classes of three dimensional models for future research and challenges. And the challenges either depend upon the fact that either some type of methodologies or arguments that we had uh, developed for one model don't necessarily carry over or break down in a higher dimensional case or break down for another model, just like in the case how we had saw the russo sigma walsh of the crossing probability estimates for the generalized random cluster model in comparison to those for the six vertex model, they were weakened from a weakening of the FKG inequality that it held only over the odd or even faces of the square lattice instead of over the entire square lattice. So the fact that the FKG inequality holds in a much weaker fashion for Ashkin Teller in that case, it demonstrated whether it could be of interest in other types of models, in other types of environments, in other types of dimensional spaces, higher or lower dimensional spaces, whether um, there would be any types of weakening of the results, which would be interesting to pursue in future work for discussing how do the arguments weaken if a previous argument, if parts of a previous argument can be applied, as well as the fact that, um, you know, are there any types of 
characteristics or is is it does some does some new type of approach have to be developed altogether and so the overview for the final presentation was that in this series is that we emphasize broader themes from previous presentations which have connections with russo seymour welsh crossing probabilities phase transitions examples of quadricotomies of possible behaviors as well as conditions required for integrability type arguments with the Poisson bracket for a wide variety of systems and dynamical systems and just in systems in, that are de de defined by probability measures and discrete probability. But as we have been mentioning in the last slide and the couple, the last few slides, it's of interest to determine whether connections can be further explored for other three-dimensional models or even other two-dimensional models, which would be related to different characteristics of the framework from the presentations that we've offered in this series. And thanks for watching.